Hi, welcome to the Whitney Art Studio. I'm Whitney. I'm a Studio Commission artist and my specialty is buildings and homes. Today, I'm really excited and I'm nervous because this is a sensitive subject and I want to talk about something that I believe is the number one problem with art and artists today. Now, what can that be? Because I'm not going to talk about the art. Beautiful art can be, that's not a problem. So I'll just get right into it. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, the number one problem that I have seen in the art, whole art world, in professionals all over the world, including most American artists and artists from every country of the world, the back of the canvas. Usually, you see some of the most beautiful art in the world painted on the front. And there is absolutely nothing on the back. Why? Why is that? This is a phenomenon, and I believe it is a huge problem. Why? I will show you. Humidity and moisture is in the air, everywhere. What happens is mold will grow on the back of the canvas if it's, you feel the canvas, if you get it and you feel the back of it, it's fuzzy, it's exposed. It is not sealed. It is not protected from the environment, from the moisture. This has some mold growing on it. You can see that this is an old, uh, has been in the weather. And another thing, the staples right here will get rusted and the wood will get mold on it. This is a good example of what could happen. It's mold everywhere. This, I will have, this was uh, some art that I found. And I think it represents a style of art that I like. And I want it to, since I'm a curator, uh, to curate means to take care of. So I want to take care of some of the things that represent a whole genre of art. And this is a good representative of art that is... A movement and this is important this is very important art for the future and I believe it really needs to be taken care of so what I'll do with this one eventually is take out all the staples seal the wood sand it sand the mold off seal the wood and do the best I can I'll patch this little hole and completely seal the back of it and it has writing on the back of it like this one this was not sealed this is another artist wesley hunt and this is just a beautiful piece of art but it was beginning to grow mold on the back of it so what i did on this one i didn't take it off yet Eventually, I probably will, so I can seal the wood. But what I've done with this one to help it for now is because it has the writing of the artist on the back, I didn't want to cover that up because this is his signature. So I had clear, a clear sealer, Hill Bond sealer, clear. And I painted all the back of it so it's it, this is sealed, and the, and you can still see the artist's signature on it. But I wasn't able, I haven't got into 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 this part of it where it could be potentially exposed. But all of the staples are sealed, and everywhere is sealed up to here with clear sealant. And also the edges will get worn. So I sealed the front and the, and the edges and everything. 
and that will help it last a little bit longer. And so what happens is you get the canvases, if you get pre-made canvases and paint your masterpieces on them, it comes on stretchy boards like this. This one has been, uh, the canvas has been removed and I have painted it and sealed this and it's ready for to, to mount. So what you do is take it off, take the staples out, and you can see if I seal it while it's still on the stretcher boards, there's this much of the canvas that is not going to be sealed. So you have to take it off the stretcher boards so you can seal all of the canvas. Water can get in there and in the staple holes and this part of it too. So this is in process. All of this stuff is in process as far as being curated. So I want to talk about a couple of things. And I think that that is probably the number one problem facing artists. And I don't know why that happens. It's just almost like the front and this. Okay, so I'll start with this one. This is a professional, world-renowned artist from Paris, France, named Yves Clement. And he does, as you can see, the drip art, which is absolutely fantastic. It's got a little bit of glitter in there. There's just a teeny bit of little pink paint, some brown paint here. And this artist drips will lay it down on the floor and drip the paint feeling that what's going on around it. So fortunately he did write or somebody wrote that this is by Yves Clement. But this is such a unique artist I think I may have been able to figure it out even if that wasn't written on the back. And this is just all he does. This is First Baptist Centerville, Georgia. I found this amazingly at the Goodwill, which was incredible. I kind of knew what it was as soon as I saw it. But the problem is the back of it is not has not been sealed. It, it's still the cloth is still exposed. So what I will do to curate this one is I will take out all the staples, seal it, clear coat seal this so I can preserve the writing, and then completely seal the wood. The wood is also exposed. And then I'll remount it, maybe, or put it in flat storage. But this is a, this is a masterpiece. And it also comes with the, this also comes with the, all of the stretch tabs. Okay, here's another example of one of my absolute favorite artists in the whole world, Shirley Stafford Long. This is a museum quality art piece of art. And on the back, there's absolutely nothing on the back. It's exposed and some dust and things get stuck in the fibers and it's very susceptible to mold and mildew. And I do not want that to happen. This is one of my favorite pieces. And because I am glad that she signs her name Shirley Stafford and puts the date on it, that's unusual. A lot of times artists will just put initials and I have no idea what these initials would stand for if I don't know it. Um, if it's not super famous and even super famous people are forgotten. So this artist signs their name LAF <clears throat> with a little smiley face which seems unique at the time, but after so many years, I don't know what that means. And anybody else might not know what that means. 
and there is absolutely nothing written on the back of it and it's not sealed this canvas is exposed what the curation process for this I will remove all the staples until I have something like this and then I will paint this part of it and seal it if there's something written on it I'll use the clear clear sealant otherwise I'll just use what I have the most of which is the classic yellow tint so I'll do that seal it and make sure it's completely sealed and then remount it and staple it again and seal or paint over this staple so that the moisture won't get in there and the staples won't rust. It'll last a lot longer if it's not going into a flat storage bin, like a humidor sort of thing. So what I've done with this, because I don't know what LAF means, when I, when I purchased the art, I made sure that I got as much information as I could on the artist so that I can pair, pair the artist, the art, with who did it. Because that, to me, is very, very important. As important as the art itself. So LAF stands for Lee Ann Farley. And I got the information from the artist. I was born in South Florida, November of 1993. My entire life, I have been drawn to art mostly drawing or painting, but I'm appreciative of all art forms. It's a per peaceful pastime for me, and I draw inspiration from local landscapes, simply what comes to mind. Typically, my favorite art subject is the ocean or trees, basically nature itself. My married name is Taylor, but I always use sign my paintings LAF with a colon and a, and a parenthesis uh, close in parentheses because my maiden name initially sounds like laugh. I enjoy the initials. So I enjoy contributing to my art world, my art to the world, so one day perhaps I will be remembered. When painting this particular flower, I was trying to create a warm feeling and calmness. My hope is that this painting brings whomever views it a positive warm feeling inside so without this information paired with this art it it it's not the same it's just not the same and I don't I'm not always going to know what LAF stands for so this part of it is part of the curation of the art and should go with the art. If you create art, please, please, please put something with it that it tells the, the, that will say who you are and what it is. This helps so much and it does create that. I just love this. And this will be curated, just like this one. And this one's not too far gone to be repaired and fixed so that it will last a very, very long time. The point of art is to remember. And I also have a piece of art that needs to be curated from a friend of mine that is Lene Roast. And I have this in plastic because it has jewels glued onto it. It's a three-dimensional art. So on the back, I actually have the, um, the program from her funeral. So this is artist has died. It's passed away. And this will help to understand who created it. Otherwise... This, it looks like, her L looks like a P. So it could be Penny, Penany, Penai, and I don't know. It, 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 it looks like a P. I don't know if you can see this. Right there. It looks like a P, but that's actually an L. 
and this is the program. This is the thing. So there's a lot to it, but that's basically, from what I've seen, the main issue in today's art world is that the artist will just put their initials, their sign their name crazy, I can't read it. They know what it is, maybe their friends know what it is, but who else is gonna know? If you don't put something completely legible on the back. So I wouldn't have known that. So this will be fully curated. This will go with the art. This will be a part of the art. So you want to make, if you're going to make something, if you're going to create something, please remember people hundreds of years from now, what, oh, who did it? This is amazing. Who did it? How did it, what were you feeling? Write a little bit something about it. So what I did, fortunately, because, and I remember this, because this is one of my favorite artists in the whole world, I had her write a little bit about who is this person. And a lot of times, maybe we get a little egotistical and think, well, maybe everybody knows who I am, um, or your, your world is small, and you think the whole world is, is, is a big world. It's a, it's a small world, and, and it's also a very big world. And a lot of times, we're just basically thinking about ourselves a lot. And it's hard to get out of that shell and, and realize that there's just new people being born every day. And who's going to know? Who's going to know if you don't have this information? So I begged and I said, please, please, please tell me a little bit about who you are. Who is the artist that painted this? And this is what I got. And this will go, this will be curated with the art. Hi, I will write you some details. I started in college at the age of 50. I'm 52. And I started at St. Lincoln Land Community College in Springfield, Illinois. My four sons moved to Virginia Beach, Virginia, and wanted me to move there to be with them. So I had two years of college in Springfield, Illinois. Then started back to school at Tidewater College in Virginia Beach. I got my apartment at a beautiful place named King's Grant Landing. My art professor took our class out for an in plain air painting. The right in King, there right in King Grant's land, Landing was this beautiful lake. And there was lots of ducks. So our assignment was to go out and find a place to paint and bring your painting to school for grading. Our class went two more times to paint on location. I finished two more years of college and my children all moved back to Illinois and my son, Jimmy, to Macon, Georgia, and he wanted me to come visit. So I came for several weeks, fell in love with the South, and especially the people here, moved here in late 80s and started teaching. I got six students and taught many people that have gone on to become wonderful artists. They stayed with me for eight, seven, eight, or nine years, and I started art on the avenue on Ingleside with several other ladies. I only lasted one year due to health problems, and the other ladies stayed there for, I believe, 15 years. Shirley Stafford Long, June 28th. And at least I have this, but I'll know, and who, who else will know? So I wonder if it, this will, obviously, this will be curated, sealed, stamped, and dated. And this will also be part of the curation uh, of the art, which to take care of it. All right, another thing that artists will do, especially craft artists, they absolutely nothing on the back, absolutely nothing on the back. And uh, what they'll do is like in this particular one, it, I think it has the date on it, which is good, really, really good. It just has the year, so I don't know what month, but it just has 
the first name of the artist, Michelle. So there's probably thousands of Michelles in the world, and there's probably thousands of Michelles in the world that is an artist. Fortunately, I know who this particular Michelle is, so I will be able to curate it with the full name and a short biography of what I know. And this part of the curation process of this is I'll take all the staples out, just like this, seal the back of it, and remount it, and put a wire hanger on it. So this will also need to be curated. I would love, love, love when the company really gets going to hire a few curators to work at home. I will deliver all these paintings. The curator will do all this work and I can continue to paint. So this, all, all of these, all of these paintings that I've shown you today are in the process of being curated sealed and preserved to last more than a lifetime because art is very very important to me okay so another example is this beautiful piece of art i found and it has three signatures so there's three people involved with this one but the problem is it's bare fabric so this won't last. Bare wood, it won't last. If it's, if it's really taken care of in a good environment, it may last for a long time, but to make sure that it lasts forever, for give it a better chance to last longer, I'm going, I'm going to take all the staples out, very carefully remove the canvas and seal it all along the back and uh, and then mount it back and staple it right here. So, and I don't know who these people are because it's just first name, first name, first initial, last name, but there is a date. So I'll put at least that on it. <clears throat> Another piece of art that I got from an artist in North Georgia, beautiful, beautiful piece of art, had nothing on the back. I did seal the back of it, but and they just wrote their initials, and I wish I had a, wrote more information on it, and I may have it somewhere in my folders and files, but I don't know what that is. There, it's EM, which is like Emily something, but it, it just, didn't have didn't have the information that I really wanted on it. I love to have the biographies, a little bit about the artist that I can put in here with the art. And this it could have fell out. That's part of the process. But this too, even though I sealed it like this, it will still I'll still have to take it off and seal it and paint the edges of it and the and the wood the stretchable. This is almost every painting I've ever seen. World-class artists with absolutely nada, nothing on the back of it, just completely bare. Now, what to do, what to do if you get an art, a canvas like this, and I have a canvas like this, what I'll do with this one I'll probably take this out and do a plein air painting on it uh, and because it's already stretched on on the stretch board. These are some really thick, this is a, a really thick like one inch, one inch board. So what I'll end up doing is taking, all, taking this out, take very carefully, take all the staples out after it's painted, seal the whole thing and then remount it and staple it back here. Or I can just put new canvas over it from the canvas roll. And that's an option. So you always keep your, your options open. So what I do to make sure that all of my commission art especially is completely sealed and protected is to Use, I use roll canvas, 
sealed on the back and the front. And this has triple layer gesso and sealed and toned. I use yellow because there's like yellow is in everything. So I seal the, try to completely seal the stretcher boards and protect it. And what I'll do, the process of course, is I will tape, use tape and tape the canvas on the piece of plywood, something like that. And you can also paint on wood. You can paint right on the wood. There's paint boards you can use, and you don't even have to even use canvas if you don't want to. And then because that's the main problem with canvases, is they break down because they're exposed and they're not sealed. I can't tell you how many times I've seen world-class professional art and look on the back of it and it's bare fabric and it's it's just whew. I hate to think that such beautiful amazing art may not last because it will get mold and mildew on it and it'll start breaking down and not last so do that and then eventually this will be painted and mounted completely sealed and it will last way way much longer way longer than a painting that has not been has not been sealed at all like this will happen this will happen and it, time goes by like that so that's that that's that and that's basically it so I plead and beg please put your ego aside or 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 whatever it is that keeps you from sealing make your art and making it last and just do it for the future our future generations please and uh this is probably the best way i've found if I, I love to work with canvas but that's the main problem so completely seal it wrap it and put whatever information you can about you about why are you an artist what do you do yeah what what is some of your training uh, when did you start painting? Uh, a lot of artists start at a very early age, three, four, five years old. Put all that in there. And I have an envelope that I put. This is, let's see if I've done this one. I haven't done this one yet. But this one, I think I had done this one. So this is what the back of any art sh should look like anything it could be this envelope like this or an envelope like this but whatever you do put some kind of information on it about who you are uh if you just sign your first name that's not gonna that who's gonna know if you just put maybe your first and last name and the date on it that isn't enough you put more information on your art. This is part of the art. This is part of what makes this special. You, you are what makes your art special. Put more, put enough information so the owner of the art will know something about who you are. Please, and, and this is so important. You know, I still can't get over, I still can't get over this experience, and I'll tell you this, and then uh, I'll wrap it up. So, <clears throat> um, I, I put, 
I usually uh, always include a certificate of authenticity, with, which has the artist's name, title, the year, the size, the medium, and I have an inventory number for every one of my pieces of art, and the style. So I paint in different styles. This is uh, this is realism. So this goes with another painting over here. And I put the patron owner who, who originally bought the art and for how much. So that I can always buy it back for that same amount. If you have this. I sign it here and date it. And my full name is on here. I have a patron agreement. Which explains how the value of the art increases over time. And I have an artist statement of purpose, why I do what I'm doing. A lot of you have this, and I have my artist biography that tells you a little bit about who I am, how I grew up, and how long I've been doing art since the age of three. And I have pretty much for my whole life just done art for free. And so it has become an industry, it has become I believe we're in the age of art and it's a wonderful thing and I would love to see everyone, everyone that even remotely wants to be an artist, to be an artist and paint and create art that will last. And this is part of the process, it's part of creation, it's, we're, you're creating who you are as the art. So, please, I cannot stress this enough. This is one of the biggest problems in the art world today. The bare back of the canvas is usually completely bare and void of anything. Some artists will actually paint, uh, paint a painting, turn it around and paint something on here. You know, that's something you can do too. So these all, all of these paintings that are in the brown area are in the process of being curated. This one is in the process and all of these paintings that are on this roll are still need to be sealed and these will probably all go flat. This goes with all of the paintings and uh, I'll show you this too this is this is interesting so over the years I have done a lot of little 8 by 10s just to get my colors, uh, practice mixing to look and see how the paint mixes, and I've, I've been able to create this little book of art. These are all 8 by 10 canvases in a book like this. These are all, these are all, these have all come from Eight, uh, eight by ten, and this whole book's just full of little paintings where I'm experimenting with the color, with mixing, with vibrancy, with contrast, with forms, design, uh, shapes, and things like that. Perspectives, uh, linear perspective, atmospheric perspective and things to get the feel of it to kind of practice then I go like crazy stuff just off the wall out of the box uh, paintings all of this book is all of, of eight by tens all in one place these are are all sealed and some of them are like this so I may leave it I may curate it it's not that big a deal if it's not important to you, don't worry about it. But I hope that 
any and every piece of art that you create is special and important. And if uh, you would think about <laughs> making it last and preserving it and do something to seal the back of it. And I've gone over a couple of videos on how to take the best way to take the staples out. It doesn't take but two or three minutes once you get the hang of it. Um, definitely, for sure, use a clamp so you won't poke your finger, get hurt. Don't want anybody to get hurt. Okay, so that's it. Uh, you guys, I hope, I, I pray that this helps you um again if you just sign your initials please i can't tell you how many times i would have probably bought a piece of paint a, a painting at uh, at the goodwill or something like that but i don't know who painted it if you just initials on it unless you have a wildly unique unique niche style like this I almost immediately knew who did it but I wasn't sh sure but I knew I, I knew there was a few artists that do drip paintings and I didn't know exactly which one so I'm really really super glad that the artist put their name on the back of it or somebody put the artist's name on it and this artist doesn't sign the front because it is such a unique style. And a lot of times you think that people will just know who painted it, but no, it's not that way. That's the reality of the world. If you if you want to if you want your paintings to be like take it to the next level. Take it to the next level and seal it. So that's it for today. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to seal the boards, seal the back on both sides. If you use canvas, if you use boards, don't worry about it. Seal the back of it so there's no bare wood. Put a lot, put as much information as you can with it. I know a lot of professional artists will have a card uh, or something some envelope and a card with their biography, who did it, why they do it, where they're from, who they are, maybe a birthday, uh, birthday or, or, or something. If you are into education, maybe some of your credentials, uh, something, something, anything to go with it, I believe really elevates the art and it brings it into a whole new level. Uh, and it's easier to curate, it's easier to catalog, and it's easier to keep up with, and it lasts a lot longer. So, thank you, if you're still with me, thank you, thank you, thank you, and I hope you got something out of it, and I will see you next time.